In the field of art, that is drawing and painting, we have different schools of art that portray the style of each school. And that style, adopted by the artists, makes the paintings so different one from the other. The Rajasthani School of Art consists of miniature style of painting, Harothi School of Art, Mewar School of Art, and there is Kishangarh Shelly paintings. Another is Kangra Shelly of Himachal Pradesh. Then we have the Mughal art, which portrays Indo Islamic style of painting, wherein we have paintings of Shah Jahan, Jahangir, Akbar, etc. Then we have the South Indian classical painting that portray Tanjore painting style. So, as we have different schools of art, similarly, this chapter also deals with these styles of painting, the different schools of art, which we shall study in this chapter, Landscape of the Soul by Nathalie Truveroy. This chapter, The Landscape of the Soul, deals with three different styles and schools of classical painting, namely, first, Chinese painting that deal with ethics, and spirituality and second is the western figurative paintings that portray perfect illusionistic likeness of the scenery or of anything that the western style artists view and then create the very same on canvas. The third school of art is the art brut or outsider art and it is so named as it is the art of the untrained visionary. That means all those who have taken up this outsider art are untrained. They have not received any training but because they have the talent to create they have become artists. Now let's read the chapter to find out the different characteristics of each and the various tales associated with these Chinese paintings and Western figurative painting styles. A wonderful old tale is about the painter Wu Daozi who lived in the 8th century. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the Zhang Emperor Zhuanzong, to decorate a palace wall. The master had hidden his work behind a screen, so only the emperor would see it. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, Birds in flight. Look, sire, said the painter, in this cave at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. The inside is splendid beyond anything words can convey. Please let me show your majesty the way. The painter entered the cave but the entrance closed behind him and before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the wall. Not a trace of Wu Daozi's brush was left and the artist was never seen again in this world. So this paragraph tells us that it is just about the classical education and from this book there is a tale that has been narrated in this paragraph. This tale, tale refers to story. This story is about Wu Daozi, the painter, the Chinese painter and 
he painted he was asked to paint rather he was asked by the king commissioned commissioned is ordered or asked by the emperor to paint his palace wall wu daozi painted this wall the emperor's wall and decorated it beautifully and hid it with a screen he hid the painting so that the first person to see the painting would be the emperor himself the emperor was called and the screen was taken away from the painting this king the emperor he saw the scene and he admired it he saw the beautiful forest that the painter had painted he saw the painting with high mountains waterfalls clouds in an immense sky immense is huge sky men were seen painted on that wall and the birds were in flight the birds were seen flying in that painting the painter whose name is wu daozi he said look sire in this cave wu daozi had prepared had created a cave also on that wall and he said well in that cave there dwells a spirit spirit is a thing a soul which is hidden from everybody's viewpoint and he says that that spirit is the main part of the painting and he asked the painter asked the king to enter the cave with him so what did the painter do the painter clapped his hand and the entrance to the cave opened the inside the painter said that is beautiful splendid splendid is beautiful and the painter wanted this emperor to enter the cave but what happened next was that the painter entered as soon as the painter entered the door closed behind him and the emperor was left outside in the palace room itself what happened next was that the painting disappeared from the wall the painter too was not seen in the world at all and his brush and the paints and all the things that he had used were neither there in the palace this tale only refers to what the chinese painter wu daozi wanted from his emperor wu daozi the chinese painter wanted that the emperor should understand the meaning of his painting the emperor should see through and through the painting of this artist but what was the emperor doing the emperor looked at the painting only superficially he admired the painting he admired the mountains he admired the birds and the waterfall but what the painter wanted what the painter had in mind when he was creating the painting was not understood by the emperor and therefore to make the emperor realize that he had not understood the inner beauty of the painting wu daozi and his painting disappeared forever so this paragraph tells us that the chinese painters they want to give a direction to the viewer they want that the inner feelings of the chinese painters should be understood by the viewers and unless the feelings the moods and the expressions of a chinese painter are understood their painting viewing that painting is futile is useless such stories played an important part in china's classical education the books of confucius and zhuangzi are full of them they helped the master to guide his disciple in the right direction so what is the work of these painters these stories are not just stories for entertainment but they help the master to give direction to their pupils 
pupils are students, whomever they are teaching art and painting. They want that the painters should take up the right direction and right direction over here refers to to paint, to create anything with their heart. From within their hearts, the feelings must be there, seen on the canvas. And if their feelings are not depicted on the canvas, then their painting is of no use at all. This, he talks of the right direction. Beyond the anecdote, they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. Contrast this story or another famous one about a painter who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from my native Flanders that I find most representative of Western painting. So the author tells us that there is another story related to Chinese classical education style and he says that these two stories tell us of the hidden feelings in the heart of the Chinese painters and the other story goes like this. The other story says that there was a painter who would not draw the eye of the dragon and why he wouldn't draw? Because he felt, now that is the feeling of the painter, he felt that if he drew the eye of that uh, painting, of that dragon on the canvas, that dragon would fly out of the painting. Now this again depicts what mood the painter was in and this is the Chinese painter that we are talking about. This Natali, who is from Flanders, he says that Flanders is a place of course and he says that because this Chinese painter has this particular view in his heart that his feelings should be depicted. The other style of painting is from the Western and the Western painting, the artists of the Western painting say that it is not required that the people must view from their heart. Even if they see whatever is seen in the whole of the world, the same thing has been depicted on the canvas, that painting is far than more than enough. That means that the western painters, they have it in mind that if these objects that are seen in the world are put upon the canvas as they are seen in the very same way, then their painting may be called as a complete painting. And here, Natali gives us an example of a western painter. In the 15th century, Antwerp, a master blacksmith called Quentin Metisus fell in love with a painter's daughter. The father would not accept a son-in-law in such a profession. So, Quentin sneaked into the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest panel. With such delicate realism, that the master tried to swat it away before he realized what had happened. Quinton was immediately admitted as an apprentice into his studio. He married his beloved and went on to become one of the most famous painters of his age. These two stories illustrate what each form of art is trying to achieve. A perfect illusionistic likeness in Europe, the essence of inner life and spirit in Asia. So, in this paragraph, this story tells us that in the 15th century, there was one called Antwerp and he was a blacksmith. He was also known as Quinton. Now, he fell in love with a painter's daughter, this master painter would not accept a blacksmith as his son-in-law. Therefore, he refused 
to get his daughter married to Quinton. Well, Quinton was not satisfied. Quinton sneaked into the painter's studio. Sneaked is to walk in stealthily in a very quiet manner. And what he did was he painted a fly on the master painter's panel. Panel is the drawing board. When this master painter entered his studio, he saw that fly on that board and he swat it. Swat is hit hard to let the fly away from there. But he soon realized that it was not a real fly. It was just a painting and he was surprised. And we already know who had drawn that particular fly on that panel. It was Quinton. And this master painter, he called Quinton, took him under him, he made him his apprentice. Apprentice is the one who is learning a particular skill. So he was going to be taught the skill of painting. And he got his daughter also married to Quinton. And later on, this Quinton became a renowned painter. Well, now these stories, the first two stories are related to Chinese classical education and this Quinton story is related to European or Western school of art. These two stories tell us that Chinese artists want their paintings to be understood from the inner soul, inner heart and should have the essence of inner life. Essence is fragrance, the smell, the beauty. Essence of air refers to the beauty of inner life should be understood through Chinese paintings. But those in Europe, that is in Western painting style, that inner beauty is not required. Whatever you see, that likeness, if it is portrayed on the canvas, it is more than enough. And here, that Asian art is referring to the Chinese painting style and European art is Western figurative painting, which refers to illusionistic likeness. Likeness over here refers to whatever the painter sees, the Western artist sees, he draws it on the canvas, as was drawn by Quinton that little fly on the panel of the master painter. In the Chinese story, the emperor commissions a painting and appreciates its outer appearance. But the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work. The emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered, but only the artist knows the way within. Let me show the way, the Tao, a word that means both, the path or the method and the mysterious works of the universe. The painting is gone, but the artist has reached his goal beyond any material appearance. So this paragraph also is just a repetition of what the Chinese painters want. So, he speaks once again of that painting that was there put up on the wall of the emperor. He says over here, the author says that the emperor had ordered for that painting and he appreciated only outwardly. Whereas the Chinese painter Wu Daozi wanted that his painting should be understood with that inner feeling. And he had told the emperor, let me show the way. And he says over here that the emperor, the king, might rule over the ter territory that he has conquered. He may rule over the whole of the kingdom. But it is only the painter who can show the right path it is the painter who can show the inner feelings of his painting. So, 
He says that even the emperor is unable to understand the inner feeling of a painter. And Dao over here refers to both. Both over here means two things. What are those two things that the painter wants? That he must show the way or the method to reach the inner feeling of the painter. And the second thing that the painter wants to depict is the mysteries and the mysterious works of the universe. This style of showing the mysteries of the universe and speaking of inner beauty of the soul is depicted by the Chinese painters. Whereas the Western painters, they do not depict the universe. They neither depict the inner beauty of the soul. They show on the canvas the things, the objects that viewers or the people see in this world. A classical Chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view, as would a Western figurative painting. Whereas the European painter wants you to borrow his eyes and look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it from a specific angle. The Chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint. His landscape is not a real one and you can enter it from any point. Then travel in it. The artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down then back again in a leisurely movement. This is even more true in the case of the horizontal scroll in which the action of slowly opening one section of the painting then rolling it up to move on to the other adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting. It also requires the active participation of the viewer who decides at what pace he will travel through the painting. A participation which is physical as well as mental. The Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes. He wants you to enter his mind. The landscape is an inner one, a spiritual and conceptual space. So this paragraph tells us the differences between classical style of painting, the Chinese style of painting and Western classical style of painting. So the paragraph tells us that a Chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes. That means the Chinese painter paints and creates a painting on the canvas and wishes the viewer to see it from any angle. And he wants the viewer to reach within the picture that he has painted.